Hey, what's going on guys? It's Monkify here for MMOBomb.com and welcome to our first impression gameplay video for Avatar Star, a new cartoony looking third person shooter that's being developed by Cherry Credits in conjunction with Pearl Digital Entertainment. Now a funny little fact, Pearl Digital Entertainment has actually worked on several AAA titles, not being the main developer but sort of being a co-developer. Some of those titles include Tomb Raider, Bad Company, the Battlefield series game, Transformers, Heavy Rain, so they definitely have a plethora of games under their belt that they've worked on. It's kind of interesting to see that they're now working on this sort of uh, very, not childlike, but very cartoony sort of uh, casual, I guess you could say, shooter. Now the game does offer you three different character classes when you're creating your character, as you can see, the Guardian, the Gunner, and the Assassin. Each of them presents their own sort of playstyle and abilities they have access to. They also have different HP amounts and different stat lines. So as you can see, the Guardian has a moderate attack, some low defense, and high survivability due to the fact that she can heal herself, she can get heal abilities, and she also has access to this crossbow which shoots basically these sticky darts that then explode. It's kind of cool. Well, we're going to play this character in just a little bit. Then of course you got the gunner here where he has access to things like rocket launchers, machine guns, he can place a shield on himself and allies around himself. He's basically a tank character. He also can access to a, sh a shield that he can put on himself as in like a holding shield. There's a bubble shield too which is one of his abilities. And then finally we have the assassin, the stealth like rogue character. She can go invisible, she can coat her blades in basically some type of acid or poison. Basically that does damage over time to everyone around her if she strikes them. And she can also put down traps and uh, use a sniper rifle. Now if we were going to go ahead and create a character, we hit create here. And you can kind of see that number one, the classes are gender locked. So you aren't able to customize your class in terms of what the gender is uh, at this start. Now you can customize sort of like their look, a little bit of the look. This is their eye color, their eye style, their mouth, their trinkets, which basically is like the gear that they place on the character. You don't really get to choose any sort of stat lines or even what weapons you start with. Although you do get to collect additional weapons weapons which are upgradable over time and these weapons can be of different styles although there are some weapons that are sort of locked to specific classes so those are the sort of well get out get the way out of the shield there we go so there's a sort of, sort of some of our character customization that we have there you can kind of see the appearance with and without a helmet in their gear essentially but I've already created my characters that I want I'm just gonna go ahead and back out here jump on my guardian if I'd have to say anything, it looks like all the classes are female. I mean, I thought the Guardian was male, but when I changed the the helmet, it, it did indeed look like a female. So here we have my character as well. You can see my total power here, my HP, my strength, all my stats here. Now stats are some things that you can get from dragging equipment onto yourself, as well as just getting stats through your different individual weapons. Uh, I have one weapon that I've actually collected here, which is the Dawn in Battle. Sort of my machine gun, but I also have a shotgun, as well as a compound bow that shoots those arrows I was mentioning. I've got the Battlefield Heal, which is an AoE heal that does both for me and my allies, as well as Arrow Shooter, which basically shoots out a bunch of my exploding arrows at one time. Now you get uh, skill points, which you can then use to unlock new abilities or uh, upgrade existing abilities every two levels. So I just got one being that I am level three, and it takes about two to three games to level up each level. So it will take you a while to sort of go through each of these and max them out, if you will. You can carry a maximum of three uh, weapons on you at a time, so I could, if I wanted to, swap out my grenade for, say, a shotgun or machine gun, but I've already got exploding arrows, so why would I even do that? There's also, of course, things that allow you to enhance items and compound them using the gold that you crew. And then these pure yellow gems, in this case, give me a socketed defense of 20 that I can put into several different things, including my character. So I could put this here if it was level five, and that would increase or add an attribute bonus to my individual card. There are customization options we can do as well, but we'll talk about those after we go through our first match. So there's three different modes, de team deathmatch, uh, domination, uh, capture and hold essentially where you capture a middle point and each of these also presents sort of team goals uh, It tells you the difficulty of these team goals basically like kill without being killed a lot uh, In this case, it's being like hold it for a total of five minutes and above killing 60 enemies or above That would be the total team goal. I'm not really sure if that gives you extra bonuses I have played around with it a little bit But I couldn't tell the difference in experience or rewards that you got but there are those things to shoot for now There's also sort of these mission based systems which essentially allow me to pick Oh, a daily mission. I will accept this. It gives me 300 gold and four of these medals. Medals can be used to purchase things like cosmetic upgrades on your character, besides obviously purchasing them in the cash shop. So there's quite a lot of different options. What is that? That is pure electric drill. That looks pretty amazing. 
going to go ahead and accept that quest. So you have a bunch of quests you can accept. Basically, these are like, you know, use the enhancement menu. Some of them are like get a certain amount of kills uh, in a mission. Use, you know, bandages, etc. Defeat seven enemies accumulatively. And you'll get one of these bronze keys, which allow you to open sort of these chests that you get. But I've already got the maximum amount of contribution or maximum of quests rather that I can get. And uh, I can't really do any of these quests right here because I am not, I can't socket that gym rather, uh, because I'm not level five. So I'm gonna abandon that one here, try to get one, defeat seven, I can do that. So I'm gonna set that mission. We'll go to start game. I'll choose the capture here and do enter. Matches don't typically take too long to start. I'd say you usually wait between 30 to 40 seconds for the game to start, but there are some issues that I would like to present about the game. I played the game for probably about six, seven, eight matches now. And one thing I've noticed is that it doesn't sort of distribute who you play against and who you play with. So you can have a team that's mostly newbies against a team that is level 30s, level 20, 29. And keep in mind, this game is sort of gear and skill based in that you're waiting to get upgraded skills, more skills, more gear. And there are obvious power differences between a new player and an existing level 30 player, which is I think the max level that I've seen so far. Doesn't mean you can't beat them. But it certainly makes it hard when they have access to a bunch of things that you don't. I've seen, for example, as uh, the Guardian here, you get access to something called Shockwave, which allows you to knock people back in the air. You can also get things called Healing Beacon, uh, which essentially is a little turret that sits there and heals everybody in AoE that you can sort of use to zone out the opponent while progressively healing yourself out. There's quite a lot of different skills that you have access to. Um, and because of the skill bracket de uh, dependency, or rather the lack of it, uh, you really have a hard time against some types of characters because of uh, you being a newbie and them being uh, an existing player that's been playing for quite a lot. Now you can also enhance weapons here, which I like the fact that I can do this while in queue. If I drop this weapon in here, you'll be able to see exactly all that's actually required in order to upgrade a particular weapon. This one will damage upgrade of 1.5%. Um, it requires alloy steel, composites, and stabilizer. Now, alloy steel is something that I got by actually breaking down an item I didn't need. Um, at the end of each match, you get a card, or you get to select a card, which is something that's available in a lot of sort of dungeon-based MMOs. But you get to select a card. That card can be anything from a weapon uh, to a sort of loot box, much like you find in things like uh, Dota 2 or even Team Fortress. And you have to open those loot boxes uh, by using a specific key that goes with that loot box in order for you to open it. And it has different items, etc. But you can basically deconstruct items that you don't want to get materials so that you can then craft new ones. And you can also just sort of get crafting materials by choosing the right particular card when you open it up. Now this queue is taking a little bit, so what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to just go ahead and cut right until the game starts. Alrighty guys, so King of the Hill was taking a little bit too long, so we went ahead and jumped into a domination mode whereby you basically capture the different flags on the map. If you hold the majority of the flags for a certain amount of time, you gain enough points. That's a funny voice there. It's like a frog voice. Uh, you gain enough points for a certain amount of time, of course you win. So I think there's in total four different maps on the map here. I'm just going to grab this one, it's the closest map. You can kind of see like your sort of objective in terms of your missions as well as your team goals and then you can see the different classes available. Whoa, lots of explosions and whatnot going on here. I do like the fact that you can track sort of like your overall progress versus missions and then team goals to see like how close you are in fact to, to completing those. Now I'm going to use, shoot that over there, see if I can get a bunch of explosions. These are great for, look at that! Look at basically you can just knock them up off the flag. Which is a really great thing. Got an assist. They also do take, you gotta remember that they do in indeed take uh, falling damage as well. Which is a, a nice sort of like disruption mechanic. You basically knock them up off the air. I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can take out this guy here. I'm getting sniped, I believe, or something. I don't know. I'm gonna ahead and run away. I got like poisoned. Don't wanna get sniped. Okay, come back over here. Now you can, of course, use uh, health potions. The health potions are, sorry, they're not health potions, they're band aids. Health band-aids do a little bit of healing over time. Not terrible, so it's not like overpowered or anything like that. But I'm also... Oh, God, okay, he's blowing me back here. Oh, man, this guy is clearly a higher level character. I miss him. Let's see if I can get this guy. Come on! Nope, not gonna be enough. So this is one of the main problems I do have with the game, is the fact that the matchmaking, it doesn't really match you up by level. And unfortunately, because this game is gear and level dependent in terms of getting access to additional skills, etc., what you'll find is that you're frequently, come on, there we go, got that guy. 
Uh, what you'll find is you're frequently going to be just killed because someone has a, a stronger heal, more abilities at their disposal, better weapons. You'll notice a lot of times, in, uh, oh god, see like there's one of the abilities that I haven't gained access to yet. So it basically means that I can't actually get too close because he's basically going to push me back. Um, oh god, put a grenade by. I don't think that actually damages me, so I don't have to worry. Ah, uh, maybe a little bit, I don't know. Alright, so we're gonna come up here, try to do some damage. Got the flag up, which is nice. I'm gonna reload. Ah, yes! Okay, he's down. So we're doing three currently to their one, so we're looking pretty good. This guy's like flying up in the air, like some kind of flying squirrel, but uh, I don't think that's gonna help him. Nope, looks like he did indeed crash and burn. Now, the assassins, it's kind of interesting with the assassins. Uh, they can go stealth, but you can see them when they get too close. So it sort of like counteracts them, like, oh, just immediately appearing next to you. And I do like that. It allows you, as you can see, allows you if you're stealthy enough. Oh, I just pinged that guy with so many things. All right, I'm going to heal myself up there. When you get like a bunch of arrows into them, it can totally wreck someone if you're, if you're lucky enough. All right. Oh, yes, there's the kill. Nice. This looks like he got hit by arrows, and then I finished him off the very last. So it's currently three to one. They're trying to take this one over there. He does get taken down. I'm going to reload over here. Now, you may notice there is a roll mechanic by hitting control. It's good for a sort of like evading damage. Uh, but it does sort of pin you in place after you roll for a little bit. You'll notice a slight delay. Other people also just jump around. Because by jumping, you actually gain a little bit of extra. I'm going to throw those right there really quick. You actually gain... Oh, shotgun time. Boom. Right in the face. Uh, you gain a little bit of extra movement by timing your jumps to sort of bounce around. Almost like Quake. Where basically you would bounce around the map really quickly. So it's two to two now. We've taken the outer two. They've taken the inner two. I think we're about to take one additional one. Oh, we should be. I don't know why we're not on the flag. All right. Wait, no. Okay, so we've taken this. They took the one behind us. All right. We're red. Sometimes I get confused by actually what uh, faction or color we are. There's a rogue trying to get the best of me. But if you notice, they're fairly squishy. Oh, I missed. Come on. Oh, it wasn't quick enough. Level 10, he had a blue weapon. Unfortunately, wasn't able to take him out quite quick enough. Now, he's over there, and I do like the fact that you actually get your skills again. They refresh when you die. Uh, so you can immediately get back, you know, get back to using them. Got a couple, but won't be enough here. I'm already being taken out from multiple angles and going to quickly die. Not doing too great. La almost last. But if you gotta, you know, you gotta keep in mind, I'm playing against people of much higher level with much more equipment. I'm lucky just to be able to assist. I think that's probably the biggest fault of this game. Oh, I got him in the air. Nice. Uh, the biggest fault of the game is the fact that the matchmaking pits you against players that are not of equal skill level or gear level. Oh man, I shot him way up in the air. That would have been amazing if I got that. All right, switch the shotgun here. Got a. Got an assist there. Got knocked up in the air, but I'm going to be alive. Got a kill, but was taken out by the tin can robot face. How does he even see out of that thing? I don't know. But we're still doing okay. 784 to 365. It goes to 1,000 before uh, the match ends. I'm going to be able to take this guy out fairly easily. Maybe, see? All right. Nope, not enough. Not enough. But I did hit him with multiple arrows. Doesn't do any damage really to him. You can get like those defense uh, gems like we spoke of, which allow you to take a lot less damage. So, I mean, I can't really touch that guy, it seems. I've, I've, had, I've had it. I've been able to take out. Oh, man. There's the guy again. Level 26. Just rick, ripping through me. Completely ripping through me. Now, there's not much strategy other than, of course, you know, the typical strategy you would find in any kind of uh, casual shooter like this. You know, go to the points that you don't own. Try to protect the points you do own. Obviously, there's no, like, uh, recoil or anything like that. This would be definitely fun to play just, you know, casually if you just want to, like, mess around, have something with... It's a little bit different as these skills uh, available to you. Certainly reminds me a little bit of Battlefield Heroes, both in terms of not so much the, the character uh, aesthetics, because obviously the character aesthetics are quite different. But uh, the, the overall art style, just like the use of... Oh, I barely got that. 40 HP. The overall use of... Uh, uh, oh, double kill there. Uh, I want you dead. You're so annoying. You don't die. Ever. God dang you. All right. But 1,000 of 463 victory, which is quite nice. We'll meet again at some point. And if you look here, we scored, I think, all of our... Yeah, we scored all of our goals. Now, I don't know if that actually means that you get... 
Uh, and maybe that means that you get better loot rewards. I think that's actually what it means. So you, uh, we scored a three difficulty there, uh, which means you get access to three or level three rewards. I guess that's how it works. Soap here, level 11, is the MVP with his uh, two machine guns there and, of course, his uh, crossbow or his normal bow, I guess. It's not really crossbow. Let me go back here. We can turn in these missions here complete. I'll grab the reward. Now, if I go to the avatar room, this is actually where we can make all the different sort of customization features in the game. Now, you notice that there was sort of gender lock to begin with in terms of creating your character, but here it doesn't really matter, it seems. I, I played around with this just a little bit earlier. I mean, I can drag this over here and I look like the guy from Avatar, although yellow, but you can change the individual colors here, you know, completely change that cosmetic. Go to your head, you can add eyes, any kind of eyes. You can even move the eyes around so I can make them like on the side of his head like a fish which I think is actually quite cool. And then what else do we got here? We got add a mouth. So I'll go ahead and go, yes, let's just add that. <laughs> okay, let's go with that. And we get different things like uh, wings, what have you. Oh man, I'm totally making this guy awesome. Look at this guy. Wouldn't you want to date that face? Ah, so of course you got clothes you can add as well. Different clothing options, what have you. I'm not sure if you can actually unlock more of these by purchasing them in the shop or if this is all the options you currently have, but you do have this. You can add boxing pants to them as well. It looks like I can't add both of these at the same time, which is a little bit curious. Maybe I can do that. And then if I hit add, ah, so it's gotta be like a different layer. I see, you can't do it at the same time. There we go. So I can do that. Ah, looks got some diggly pants. All right. And you add some tattoos and trinkets. Now trinkets come from things like your hat. I can put a hat on my guy. It's a cute hat. And then I can put a pipe in the middle of his forehead. Oh, or I can add it off to the side of his mouth. Hey, sir. I'm a fish man, sir. All right. So we got that. Let me add that. Now, let's see. How do I exactly... That's okay for now. I would definitely not that like to call that my child. But hit OK and aha. This is where we actually see how much it costs. So this is, of course, the in-game sort of cash-up currency. 6900 is what it would cost. Or you could purchase it with 50 of these medallions that you accrue by doing certain sort of daily missions. I only have four of them, so obviously it would take a while. Much easier to just purchase it, but that's sort of what they want you to do. It's not needed, it doesn't change your gameplay, just merely changes your look, and it's sort of necessary, I'd have to say, if you really want it to be distinct, because obviously in the normal customization options when you're creating a character, there's not much to go by. I'm gonna go ahead and leave the avatar room there. But here's the medals I was talking about. Essentially, once you get as many as you can or as many as you want, you can use that to purchase new weapons. Um, you can even add purchase avatar cards with the gold, although it takes 50,000 and I only have 5,000 right now. So it takes a while for these things. I don't really know how balanced it is in terms of like getting resources to purchase things out of the cash shop or just purchase things in general versus just purchasing them with the CC, which is the in-game current, or sorry, the cash shop currency. I keep saying that. So I'm not really sure how balanced that is. You know, can, they can say, oh yeah, you can achieve everything just by using, you know, in-game currency, but it may take you quite a while. But overall, that's gonna be my first impression video here for Avatar Star. If you guys want to know more about the game, I highly suggest you check down below at mobomb.com for the full gameplay profile. This has been Spunkovay, and as always, take care guys. Spunkify out.